Hey everyone, it's Colin Shadwell back for another outside throwing tutorial. So this time I'm outside making a tall, I guess the, the best shape you could use to describe it would be kind of a, a bowling pin. It's kind of ovalish in the bottom and has a little a decorative flare on top. Um, to make these, and I've made a few of these before, the process is still the same. You just want to try to get some height out of your first few pulls uh, while leaving enough clay at the top uh, to be able to put this little decorative piece at the top, which you'll see here me do in a little bit. But um, uh, it does require a little bit of concentration that you don't get too thin here. So you notice as I'm pulling here, I try to leave the top a little bit thick. Um, you can already see a little bit of wobble on the top there, which I usually don't mind too much. But you see that I'm not really pulling all the way to the top there. I try to leave that top part a little bit thicker than usual. Always covering the piece with plenty of slip. You can see here, I'll take it all the way up. And I've got the height that I want here. I don't think I make any more pulls. Maybe one more pull here. Just trying to get more out of the base. There's always a lot more clay at the bottom than there is at the top. So I'm just trying to get some of that clay out of the bottom and up into the piece. It adds for height and it helps with structure too. So just taking my rib tool and just smoothing out my finger lines on the uh, on the outside. And now I'm taking my fingers and I'll just use the um, the chamois that I carry with me. is Sometimes I'll use that or sometimes I'll use the rib tool, either one. But just really gently, slowly back and forth, just start pushing out from the uh, from the inside. Once I've got it, the, the bottom part that I want, then I'll start slowly collaring this part back in. You just have to do this a little bit at a time. You squeeze it too much, then sometimes it'll fold in on itself. And the top will get a little wobbly, so you just have to kind of cut it off when it bothers you too much. But again, you can see that if you don't leave enough clay on the top, you will not be able to get this much height at the top piece here. So um, I've kind of left the bottom where I want it, and now I'm just going to go through and slowly start pulling this a little bit higher and a little bit higher, and then start shaping it with the rib tool a little bit at a time. Plenty of water, plenty of slip. If your fingers catch it all in this, it will twist the whole top part right off. So you got to make sure there is no friction here. So once I get it the way I want it here with plenty of flare on the top part, using my chamois tool to kind of smooth out any other little uh, imperfections and then cutting off piece with the uh, what we call the frank tool, the, the wooden rib tool. So now I've got my uh, piece, let it dry out some more, and I've got my trimming tool out. I'm just going to go through and start trimming this. Now this is one that I will not be able to turn over and trim the bottom and put a, a foot on the very bottom. So one of these I just kind of roll over a little foot on the bottom just by creating a little uh, divot at the bottom like that um, to kind of give it some weight so it doesn't topple or wobble or anything like that. And of course I just use my uh, my metal rib to kind of, it's kind of like a, a sandpaper. It really just kind of smooths everything out um, to get where I want it. And of course got my chatter tool here. Little chatter marks. My daughter is playing with the camera and she's making it wobble, of course. There she is. Little cameo. Playing out in the yard. And now I've got to do my little cutouts. Now with this one, <laughs> I let this guy, uh, as I was making my other pieces and trimming them, it, it, it sat out in the sun. I didn't. I looked up and saw that it was, it was baking in the sun, so it had dried out quite a bit, and I went and started carving this um, when it was probably a bit too dry. My, my exacto tool really had to work. Now, it was probably just beyond leather hard, so um, if, if it gets too far like this, you can, and I do, take you know wet paper towels or wet newspaper and just wrap the piece and let that moisture kind of soak in slowly over uh, you know an hour or something like that and then it's, it'll be fine again but um, this was right on the border so I just went in and went for it. Um, I say it's almost easier to to carve it when it's too hard as opposed to too soft. Too soft you run into a lot of different problems of you know not being clean cuts or not supporting the piece and it collapsing on you so if you have to uh, if you have to edge one way or the other I would edge toward cutting it when it's too hard but um, it just means a little extra work. You got to put a little more uh, pressure in there and of course that can lead to uh, disastrous things too if you're not very careful with your exacto blade. So going nice and slow, taking your time. That's the keys to making these little cutouts here. So I've, I made these little oval shapes and then I went through and decided uh, to use my big hole cutter and then put these little triangles around. So this one has a lot of negative space, you know, plenty of space to see in between, which I thought was pretty cool. So here's the end result. A nice tall piece. I'd say this is about maybe 14 to 16 inches tall. Lots of cool cutouts in the middle, plenty of texture on the bottom. Hope you enjoyed watching me make this piece and come back and watch some more.